Uh, but how? Now, we are joined by author and online fraud exposer, uh, Becky Holmes, as we're going to be discussing romance scams and how to spot them. And we want to hear from you. If you've fallen foul of a romance scam or almost fallen foul for it, give us a call. Let us know your story. The more we share these stories, the more people can be protected by them. Um, Amy, you're happily married. However, Just you've, you've got... <laughs> <laughs> You've got an interesting story uh, about uh, sort of online romance. Yeah, I mean, I've got many dating stories from the battleground. <laughs> it took a while, had to kiss a few frogs there. Um, but once, when I, I come off TV and I got a message, a private Instagram message that said, hello, I work on behalf of insert very powerful and famous footballer's name. And uh, he's asked me to get in touch because he's a big fan. Um, so, can I say who the footballer is? I'd rather you don't. Yeah. Okay, because <laughs> like, when you imagine it, it makes it even funnier. Um, he'd love to meet you if, you if you'd like to come to this hotel at this time. Um, so I clicked on the profile and it had maybe like three followers. Didn't really look massively linked to said footballer, yeah, right. so I swerved it. Okay. And I guess I'll never know, really. <clears throat> You'll never, if, if ever I was, know. My, my brief... Uh, hint of nearly being a wag that is but, <laughs> but you did uh, you did some due diligence which uh, we're going to get onto with Becky in, in a minute Rick I know you've been covering these stories as well yeah. because at the heart of them and look I, I, I'll I'll put my hands up and say I, I've been doing a lot of uh, work of the decades on scams mm. to me when I interview victims of scams the romance scams are the hardest interviews because most of the time when you're interviewing someone on scam, they've lost money. They maybe feel a little bit embarrassed, but when you interview romance scam victims, it's not just the money. It's the loss of trust. Mm. It's the, 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 the humiliation sometimes. Mm. And it, it, it's just really, really difficult. What's been your experience when yeah, you've so covered these stories? I, 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 over the years, doing stories on romance scams, I suppose when you met the individual concerned, I suppose the biggest surprise was you expected to be in front of someone who, you know, you might think uh, wasn't quite aware, was a bit standoffish and was like, oh my gosh, I've just been dragged into this. But actually, a lot of the times you meet these people and they're astute, they're up to date, they're, they're, they're savvy, they've been dragged into this scam because maybe they're lonely, maybe they're lost, mm -hmm. maybe they're looking for something in their life. I tried to do this story so many times when I was working at Radio 1. Uh, for, for younger people mm. and I just never got the clicks like I never ne never I never kind of resonated with kind of like that under 30 audience mm. as much it was always for me and I'd be interested in speaking to Becky today always for me it was the over 65s who tended to be dragged in from abroad places like Ghana Nigeria where these a lot of these scams are ran out uh, were, are ran from it wasn't really the younger People, but I understand that yeah. it, it, it well, is going younger because well, let, of TikTok. Let's speak to let's speak to the expert, yeah. Becky. You've 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 written a book about this, but how did you get into this area of romance scams? It came about through boredom. Right. So lockdown happened. Mm. I'd done about a million jigsaws. I'd completed Netflix. <laughs> All that I had left to do was to go onto Twitter. So I started an account. Oh, don't go on that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Scary exactly. Place. You could tell how, how bad things had got. <laughs> So I went onto Twitter. Within a few days, I had dozens of really handsome young men saying, oh, I love you, I think you're the best thing ever, and you know, I'm a big fan of yours, and I want to get to know you. And I thought, yeah, of course you do. <laughs> um, so I was just blocking and deleting. And to be honest, I was lucky that so many of them came to me at once, because it was very clear that there was a pattern. If there'd been just one person who said, yeah. oh, hi there, you look really lovely, I might not have thought mm. anything of it. Um, but anyway, I, after a while, I just thought, I'm going to see if I can waste these people's time, see what happens. And I started being as nonsensical as I could to see if that they would pick up on anything that I said, which they didn't. They just stuck to their script. Because it is a script. And I have yeah. to say, I, I've seen one of these scripts uh, because we managed to get hold of it for this programme I was doing. And it's got every line that you think a script should have. So it's, it's every got... Every possibility. Every possibility. Well, yeah. So it's got 50 or 100 different uh, first lines. How, what's that first contact going to say? What's your second contact going to say? How do you get closer? How do you open the romance? 
aspect of it. It's all scripted. It is. The, thing is, the thing that's amazing about Becky is I had a look at her book and you need to see these screen grabs because oh, while the... they are very scripted, she is anything but. <laughs> yeah. This is an imaginative lady. <laughs> so you get those people sort of kind of going, well, this is not an, unex this is an unexpected answer. Uh, what do I do? But, Becky, let, let's talk a little bit about... For people who are unfamiliar with romance scams, what do we mean when we say a romance scam? It's what it says on the tin, really. So somebody contacts you, somebody gets into a relationship with you for fraudulent reasons. So often it's financial, but sometimes it's down to power. Sometimes people get off on leading double lives and that's still a fraudulent mm. relationship, even if it's not financially based. Um, we were talking in the green room uh, about this and Rick, you, you sort of seem to still be quite incredulous how yeah. some people... Uh, tonight, uh, I've done an episode for, for Channel 5, it goes out this evening, uh, and we speak to a lady who's lost about £67,000. I think you spoke to someone who's lost £120,000. Yep. Rick, you seem to be not incredulous, but a no. and I think a lot of people watching That's will fair. go, how on earth can you send that amount of money to someone you've never met? So, Becky, what's going on? So, something that I have talked about in the book and I've spoken to a lot of psychologists about is this link between what happens with romance fraud and what happens in an abusive relationship. Mm. So, there's this real coercive control at the centre of it. You can be isolated from your friends and family, so you're not getting, you know, that external perspective saying, I don't think this is quite right. Um, your, your confidence is down, you don't want to report it. It's very, very easy to find yourself in a situation. You know, if, if you occasionally scams will overtake us when we've just slightly, let, you know, let our eye off the ball. Mm -hmm. I nearly got done with a Royal Mail one recently yeah. because I just yeah. wasn't looking at things properly. Well, let's have a little look. We've got a clip to show you here. Uh, it's the lady that I met who, called Ava who had fallen victim to a romance scam. Have a little look. There was a, a direct message on social media to me saying that he was talking about the pictures on my profile and, you know, could we be friends? No harm in that, I thought. Had this ever happened before to you? No. I've got a tattoo on my foot. I think he mentioned that. What did he say? A nice tattoo, nice foot, something you think, oh. <laughs> and then it, it just got to chatting, just, you know, where are you, what do you do, how old? Married, divorced. He was on an oar rig in the middle of the sea. OK. Somewhere. And knew he was coming home to America shortly. So he, he was an American? Yes. Right. That was Ava's story. You can watch that tonight, 8pm on Channel 5, uh, about the rest of that story. There... You know, Ava, I can tell you, she was very generous with her time. It's a really brave thing to be able to talk about things, mm. yeah. something like that. So huge thanks to her and to everybody who comes forward with these. But is that a common trait there, this idea that people are lonely, they get approached out of the blue? You know, we did a story on the show last week where we are talking about people over the age of 70 sometimes go a month without speaking to other people. Yeah. So all of a sudden, someone reaches out to you and says, hey, I want to be your friend. I want to have a conversation. She was telling me how every day she looked forward to their conversations, even though they weren't even on the phone or video, they were just text messages. That human contact. Yeah. yeah. And one thing that's quite interesting when you look into what these fraudsters do, they work in shifts. So there's always somebody there. So Ava, for example, she might have messaged at three o'clock in the morning, hello, I can't sleep. Somebody pretending to be that person will have come back and said, oh, my darling, I'm so sorry. So there's always somebody there, which means that that person, you know, the, the bond with that person who's available mm. day and night mm. becomes so much stronger. Well, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the red flags, because the whole point of us talking about this today and being on Valentine's Day is to warn people. So let's have a look at some of these red flags. So coming up, um, rush to get information <coughs> is something that's uh, really important. Um, you're on a web website, a dating site perhaps, perhaps, and someone's rushing to take you off that website and get you onto a private messaging app like a WhatsApp or text message or Viber or something like that. That's a red flag, isn't it, uh, Becky? It's huge. Basically, the platforms that they've met you on, they can be kicked off if somebody reports them. If they get you onto Google Chat or WhatsApp or, or Viber, 
they've got you for good. That's something to, to so if someone's urging you to start communicating on another other platform. Uh, next, uh, they're trying to keep uh, it a secret by asking you not to tell your family and friends. This is a really common trait. They'll tell you things like um, other people won't understand what we have, the relationship that we have, or um, they, they just won't understand us. To, and we were talking about this in the green room. It's just like proper coercive mm. behaviour, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely is. And you can see why they do it, because the more that they keep you to themselves, the less people are going to say, don't send that person money, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, of course, that is absolutely key to a, a yeah. successful scam. But, Becky, there'll be a lot of people screaming at the TV right now, I think, thinking, right, I've just given over £10,000 or, I don't know, £1,000. And then this person comes back to you and they go, um, oh, you know what, that £10,000, it got me out of trouble for this week, but actually yeah. I, I need a bit more now just to keep me on the straight and narrow. It, why would you give more once you've thought, hang on, th this doesn't seem right? You're is optimistic, aren't you? I think this yep. is why people have such blind spots when you it comes want to it love to and true. romance. You can be so ordered in all areas of your life, but when it comes to that whole connection... Well, that, yeah, yeah uh, so let's, I, uh, let's move on and give you some more uh, red flags as well, because it's really important, because it can help you realise that perhaps what you're dealing with is a scam. Another big red flag is if that person never wants to meet you in person. Um, usually the signs are that they're always travelling abroad or hard to reach places. If they're evasive when they ask to meet or video call, then you really need to be wary that this might be a scam. And finally, look, if it's too good to be true, then it probably is a lie. If the person that you're talking to is that this dream person, the fairy tale person, they're working abroad, usually in the, you know, some sort of medicine, some frontier, they're a doctor saving mm. lives, or they're doing, you know, again, think twice um, before you start sending any money. Really, really important. Look, I know a lot of you want to tell your story, and I thank you for that, but let's uh, speak to Christine in Berkshire. Christine, uh, good afternoon. What's your story, Christine? Hello, this was last year. Um, I was fat. I'm 76 years old, by the way, and an invalid. Well, I sat here anyway uh, one evening and I was looking through Facebook and there was this soldier supposed to be in Afghanistan, an American soldier, and I just felt sorry for him. So I text back. Well, he said to me, would I go on to WhatsApp? And he sent a picture of him and his dog sitting in front of the American flag and that. He said he was a colonel in the army. And this went on for about four months. He used to send me big bunches of roses on my phone in the morning and woke me up every month. I did, I must say, I enjoyed it. It was just, <laughs> I did enjoy it. And then he said to me, um, he was coming out of the army and he was going to um, come and live in, in England and he got a daughter, that's right. He even said to me, you'd make a lovely mum for my daughter. Oh, he said he was a widower. And um, anyway, we started talking. He said, I've got some very important papers coming through. He said, uh, they're coming through to England, but I've got no one there to pick them up. Would you pick them up for me? Right. And I thought, well, that's funny. He says, nothing to worry about. He said, it's just a house I'm selling. Uh, but these pay you might have to pay a bit of money, he said, but the um, papers are very important. Well, I sat and talked and thought about it that night and he phoned me again the next morning and he said to me, can you do that for me? He said, it's very urgent. And I said to him, I thought it was funny, so I just said to him, oh, I said, uh, my son's in the police force, which is a lie. I said, and I told him about you and he said he'd be willing to do it. it to his police station. You could have the papers sent there. And what happened the bloke the... then turned to me and said, you evil woman, and he just hung up. <laughs> oh, after how long was that, Christine? Four or five months of... of four or uh, five months, yeah. Four or five months. Uh, Christine, thank you for sharing your story, and I'm glad it didn't end with you sending him a bunch of money. Uh, quick thinking, uh, so well done.
Well, look, we've got some uh, quick tips uh, for you as well uh, before we move on. So if someone you're speaking with uh, now, if they don't, if they're not going to be afraid to play detective. So ask them a lot of questions, like, just like we heard from Christine there. Does their story add up? Do a little bit of homework. Amy did a little bit of homework as well. <laughs> uh, look at the facts that they're telling you. There's always plenty of ways to research who you're talking to. Google their name and their details. Uh, do other social media profiles come up? If you're savvy enough to be able to do this, I know it's a little bit techy, but it's simpler to do than you think, do what's called a reverse image search. Mm. So look at that image of the profile, search it. If it comes up again, then you know that that person is not who they say they are, so they're not going to be trusted. Uh, and uh, the next one is the golden rule to meeting people on the internet. Never send any money or share any personal information with someone you've not met in person. Uh, OK, so if you've not met them in person, don't send them any money. If you're still worried uh, and the person won't leave you alone, then report it to the police. Report it to Action Fraud. Um, that's the Centre for Reporting Cybercrime in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. And if you've been scammed or defrauded or experienced cybercrime, report it to Action Fraud straight away. You can go online or you can do that by calling 0300 123 2040. If you've lost money uh, or you think someone is having access to your bank account or any of that stuff, tell your bank as soon as possible. Um, and also my advice to for all of that, really, and I think, Becky, you're going to back me up on this, talk to people about it. Mm. Actually, if you are in a relationship and it's making you feel happy, tell someone else about it so someone else knows that you're in that relationship. Because very often or not, they might be able to pick up on something that you've been blinded by because you're too excited. Yeah, I think the victims that I've interviewed, a lot of them have said that, um, you know, they've friends have walked away from them because they've become secretive. Mm. And what I would say is that as somebody's friend, you need to say to them, I'm not going anywhere. If anything mm. goes wrong with this relationship, I am always going to be here. Yeah. And that way somebody is more likely to to confide if something does go wrong, if they're being asked for money, if they're being asked to share photos that make them uncomfortable or anything yeah, like that. Maybe also don't feel silly if you fall for this type of thing and then you sense check it with a friend and they say, I don't think this is what it is. Don't, don't be too oh, hard do you on know, yourself. It is so common. And one thing I always say is that the, well, the common denominator between victims of romance fraud is not stupidity, it's yeah. kindness. Yeah. Uh, well, you can follow uh, Becky's uh, taunting of these uh, would-be romance scammers on her Twitter feed, which is... Death to spinach. Death to spinach. <laughs> uh, long story. Uh, Twitter <laughs> feed. And, uh, and her brilliant book, which is called... Keanu Reeves is not in love with you. Keanu Reeves is not in love with you. There you go. Thank you to Becky Holmes for joining us. Uh, if you found this part of the show interesting and want more advice about avoiding scams uh, like this, then do catch my show uh, this evening. It's called Scams. Don't get caught out. It's on Channel 5 tonight at 8pm. Now, look up.